the really new thing was to give the Obama volunteers in battleground states the information that they needed to uh, not go to every house on the block, but just go to the three or four houses where Mrs. Jones hadn't returned her application for an absentee ballot. Mr. Smith needed a ride to the polls on election day. You know, Mrs. Johnson uh, wasn't registered yet, but ch had shown some evidence of being a potential Obama supporter. And they married technology and shoe leather in a way that reconnected people. He doesn't get what, do they need the third picture of me to hang in their bathroom, you know? <laughs> and the answer to that is yes. And that, you know, he doesn't really get the neediness of politicians. It's, it's a little bit of an abstraction. It's a little bit of an abstraction to him, but you know, he does say his favorite movie is The Godfather, and there's that line in The Godfather from Hyman Roth, this is the business we have chosen, you know. He's chosen to be in this business where he has to stroke them and you know, throw on the extra praise and tell them how great they are, and this is just part of the job description. And as Al Sharpton said to me about African American voters, uh, blacks vote for two reasons, Sharpton told me. Hope and anger. We voted out of hope in 2008 and out of anger in 2012. Why the anger? Voter suppression. I remember during the McCain-Feingold debates, going to a briefing that uh, McConnell gave in the Senate press gallery where he said, I'm for, I'm for some change, I'm for disclosure. He said that over and over and over again until the Democrats and Obama proposed it. And now not only is he against disclosure, he is saying he was never for disclosure, which was what you call a big fat one. So uh, for instance, uh, Michael Nutter, the mayor of Philadelphia, called um, uh, Jim Messina, the Obama campaign manager on, on election day and said, you know, they're talking about a white wave, George Will and all these People are saying that Obama's that Romney's going to get over 300 electoral votes. So there's a wave coming. It's a huge black wave because my folks are tired of them fucking with our president. No, I think it's a terrible system. Um, but money in politics is like water running downhill. It finds its way. The 1896 election had a lot in common with the 2012 election. And Mark Hanna, who was William McKinley's campaign manager, said, uh, and Carl Rove's role model, as, as Rove will tell anybody, uh, said, uh, there are two things that are important in politics, money, and I can't remember what the other one was. <laughs> election night, Fairmont Hotel, NBC News calls the election for Obama, and Valerie Jarrett says, you won. And the president says, I'll believe it when I hear it on Fox. So um, many of Congressman Ryan's uh, favorite books, uh, I'm sure, are carried in this bookstore, as they are in almost any uh, bookstore, because the novels of Anne Rand remain very popular, particularly with adolescent boys. <laughs> and then at a certain point, uh, you know, the boys grow up a little, they realize these are turgid, boring novels, and they're not as mad at their parents, so they're not as mad at the government, and they, they grow out of their Anne Rand stage. Um, Paul Ryan never did. <laughs> After the election, uh, an African-American friend was there for a party, a uh, small party with the president's good friends, the ones he really relaxes around, and... Um, Obama said, you know, I'm the only uh, Democratic president since Franklin Roosevelt and the only president since Eisenhower to win an outright majority, 51% twice. A, a lot of two-term presidents, there were third-party candidates, they, they got under 50%, all of them, in, in, the, in the last half century. Uh, and so uh, his friend uh, says, so let me get this perfectly clear. I guess that makes you a bad motherfucker, <laughs> says to the president of the United States. And Obama, without missing a beat, says, that's my point. 